I had a, a scare about my father and a scare about my dog in the same week. And um, as some of you know, uh, I lost my mom. What is freedom? Is freedom working every day, nine to five, just to have a roof over your head? Working so hard for money and possessions, but then you realize years have passed you by? Are you working to live or living to work? Life is short. We only have one life. Are you living it? After living the normal life, I made a choice to sell, donate, and give away 90% of my possessions for freedom. No chains to hold me down. My channel is all about how I built my tiny home on wheels and how I live in it with my dog, Charlie. So I can travel and see this beautiful country. Come and join me on my journey. Hey, what's up guys? So, if you remember two videos ago, uh, at the end of the video, I said that I was going to uh, talk about some stuff that's been going on in my life, uh, personal stuff. I had a couple things going on that I had to wait for some tests to come back. I'm fine as far as I know. <laughs> uh, but this was about my dad. Um, everything came back negative, so everything is positive. Um, and we're, we're in the good for, uh, for right now. So that's a sigh of relief. That's awesome. Um, the second thing was Charlie. So I woke up one day, took Charlie out, and he was limping on his left side. Left front paw, and then a little bit later, his rear leg as well. So the next day, he was limping and weak and lame on his right side. Same thing, front paw and then back leg. Come on, come on puppy. Go this way. Yeah. Um, so of course I start Googling stuff like an idiot and they're telling me all kinds of crazy stuff. Anything from, you know, check his paw, he might have a splinter, he might have a sand burr. Um, all the way up to cancer, tumors, um, nervous system, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So the third day, he could barely walk. Um, I'm picking him up. I'm carrying him in and out of the van. I bring him to uh, an area to go to the bathroom. He can't lift his leg or anything like that. I ended up taking him to the vet, to the emergency vet. I was in the parking lot probably for about six, seven hours. Um, and we ended up doing some blood work. The vet told me, he was like, go get something to eat. You know, obviously it's going to be a while. So I did that, came back and um, the vet was like, he called me and he was like, hey, we haven't done the blood work yet. And I'm like, oh my God, I've already been here for five hours. So um, he was like, I was talking with my colleagues and we think it could be something else and wanted to run it by you to uh, do the tests and stuff like that. And I asked him specifically at the beginning, you know, to run blood work. He said he was going to do it, never did it. So I said, well, why don't you run the blood work first? And then we go from there and see what happens. Because with my Googling, um, I came across a couple things that his symptoms were, um, was looking and leaning towards uh, Lyme disease. So the vet calls me uh, because the coronavirus couldn't go inside. So I was in a parking lot the whole time. Um, so he calls me back and he was like, all right, blood work came back, a very, very faint line for Lyme disease. So he said that he wanted to run another blood work. I was like, all right, that's fine. So he runs another blood work. He calls me back in about five minutes and he was like, uh, now we have a negative for Lyme disease. I don't think the vet was 100% sure. But like I said, he was trying to go back and forth with his colleagues saying that he wanted to check something else. And it was a immune disease. And I'm like, oh. So like I said, I was talking to a couple other friends. 
and my kids, two of my kids at the, you know, while all this was going on and they were all worried and stuff like that. And then my one son, my middle son, he was calling me freaking out and, um, he was like, dad, what are you going to do if they have to put him down? I'm like, man, we're not, we're not even going there. We're not even thinking about that. I was like, you know, Charlie and I have plans. Charlie and I have 48 states to visit. You know, I would love to do 50, but there's no guarantee on uh, Alaska and Hawaii. But, you know, Charlie and I have 48 states to go to. And um, I said before that I was going to take a picture of him in front of every single uh, United States welcome sign. And I already started doing that, you know, with the states that I've been to. So, uh, anyway, long story short, the vet eventually said, Hey, look, we're going to, we're not going to do these other tests on him. We're going to send him home with the antibiotics and pain medicine just in case. And within five to seven days, give us a call back or check with your, uh, your primary vet and do a follow-up and see what happens from there. In the first couple of days after he got out of the vet, he was struggling. And I was still carrying him, picking him up. Even though he wanted to jump in the van, I just wouldn't let him do it. Um, but I was carrying him and picking him up and all that stuff. And But now, you know, it's been about a week, eh, two weeks later. And um, he's running, he's walking, he's playing, he's lifting his leg to go pee. You know, so um, that's all the good news. Uh, we still have to follow up and all that but right now he's doing okay so i was really really nervous really scared about the whole situation um and it made me start thinking you know putting things into perspective about uh van life and doing what the hell you want to do um if you have something that you want to do go do it because life is short and you have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow um i had a, a scare about my father and a scare about my dog in the same week. And um, as some of you know, uh, I lost my mom. Um, and that's been hard enough as it is. <laughs> so um, I've been trying to, uh, you know, get by with that. You know, without having her around, without having her here to talk to and and share my experiences with and stuff like that, it, it hurts. So to get that information about my dog and my dad at the same time, um, and then of course my son asking me, well, what are you going to do if you have to uh, put him down? Uh, that just kind of put things into perspective, man. So if there's anything that you guys want to do out there in life, go do it. You know, <laughs> uh, life is short and you have no idea what's, what's around the corner, man. You know, for you or anybody else in your life, you know, your family members, your pets, you know, stuff like that. So, um, just putting things into perspective. Walk a little bit. Come on, walk a little bit. Come on. Come on. Oops. Okay, walk. Walk a little bit. Come on, puppy. Come on, Charles. Just a little bit. Come on, just a little bit. Come on, puppy. Here, come on. Come on, just a little bit. Keep going, walk a little bit. Come on. All right, good boy. Good boy, Charles. Good boy. Now we're going this way. Whoops. All right, come on. No, this way. Come on. Come on. Come on, Charles. This way. Come on. That's a lot better than it was yesterday. That's a lot better, Charlie. That's a lot better.
That's a lot better. I mean, this way. Hey, this way. Go this way. It's early. <laughs> Go this way.